Hey guys, this is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Service Tech, and today what we're going over is how does refrigerant work in an air conditioning system? So how does refrigerant absorb the heat from the inside of the building, and how does the refrigerant move that heat to the outside where it rejects the heat? So the ability of the refrigerant uh, right here is, the secret is, in the saturated state where you have liquid and vapor both existing at the same time within the coil. So let me just give you a quick tour of what's happening here because we have an air handler right here, which is a normal indoor unit, and then you have a outdoor condensing unit right here. And so what's actually happening is we've just cut open this and we're showing the refrigerant flowing through the system. And up here is a guide for the refrigerant state. So you have low pressure, low temperature liquid. So this is your low pressure, low temperature vapor. So over here, this is liquid, this is vapor, and that's both low pressure. And then over here you have high pressure vapor and then high pressure liquid. When you see that they're both in, in the coil at the same time, so this reflects uh, or represents the, the outdoor coil, and this right here represents the, the indoor coil, when you see saturated refrigerant, that is the key. That is the secret to the refrigerant's ability to absorb heat here, move it to the outside, and reject it outside. So you have a couple things that are, that are being used to, to accomplish this task, and one is a pressure increasing device, which is a compressor. So it takes low pressure, low temperature refrigerant in, and you have high pressure, high temperature vapor exiting. And over here you have your, your metering device. So this is a, a restrictor or a pressure lowering device. And so you have high pressure liquid entering and then low pressure liquid exiting. And so once the refrigerant's low in pressure, it expands into a liquid and vapor. So you see there's like about 20% vapor right here. And this is 80% liquid. Well, as it, as it travels through the evaporator coil and you have air crossing the coil, the refrigerant traveling through the tube, it's absorbing the heat from the air that's traveling across and it's lowering the air's temperature to where it comes out as a, as a low temperature uh, air that may be say 50 degrees here and it may be entering at 70 degrees here as a dry bulb temperature. And so as the refrigerant enters this evaporator coil, it may be around 40 degrees right here. The thing is, it's not going to increase in temperature as it's absorbing heat from the air crossing the coil. As long as the refrigerant is saturated, it's going to absorb more and more and more heat while it's saturated. But the thing that's, that's happening is the amount of vapor in the saturated mix is increasing and the amount of liquid is decreasing. So it's 40 degrees here, it's 40 degrees here, it's 40 degrees, 40 degrees, 40 degrees, 40, and this is the last time it's gonna be 40 degrees. But during this entire time, it's been absorbing a lot of heat energy from the air. Once it's completely in the vapor state, it increases in temperature now because it's only a vapor now. And the increase in temperature until it comes out of the evaporator coil, that's called the superheat. And that is something that we, we use to check the refrigerant charge and to, to know the health of a system. And we usually measure over here. And when we measure it here, it's called the total superheat. It's the temperature increase between here and where it is over at the outdoor unit. So this is the total superheat between here and here. Superheat is just between here and here. And so this metering device is monitoring the superheat to make sure it has a healthy amount of saturated refrigerant. That's the key, the saturated refrigerant. A healthy superheat may be, say, 12 degrees of superheat. So if it's 40 degrees here, by the time it gets over here, it's 52 degrees. So maybe it's 40 degrees here and it's 50 degrees here. And maybe by the time it comes over here, it's 51 degrees. The refrigerant in this vapor tube is carrying the heat energy that it already absorbed from the indoor unit. It's carrying it to the outside and it's going to carry it there in order to reject the heat to the outdoor air. The problem is, say you only have 52 degree refrigerant right here and the outdoor air temperature is 90 degrees. So what you need to do is you need to increase the pressure in order to increase the temperature of the refrigerant. So we take low pressure vapor entering and we have high pressure vapor exiting. Well, with the refrigerant, anytime you increase pressure, you increase, increase the temperature. And so you have high temperature refrigerant exiting the compressor and say that's 170 degrees. So now as the refrigerant travels through the coil, it's able to reject the heat stored in the refrigerant into the outdoor air 
And so, for instance, what will happen is this refrigerant will lower in temperature as it's rejecting heat until it gets to where you have liquid forming with the vapor. And that's called saturated right there. So that's saturated, this is saturated, this is saturated. So once it gets to this point, it's st the refrigerant stops lowering in temperature, but it still continues to reject heat to the outdoor air. So say it's 105 degrees here, right here. It's going to be 105 degrees here. It's going to be 105 degrees here. The refrigerant is still going to be 105, and it's still going to be 105 here. And then once the refrigerant comes out of the saturated state where it's only liquid, that's when it can start lowering in temperature as it continues to reject the refrigerant's heat to the outdoor air. And so if it's 105 degrees here, the refrigerant is still lowering in temperature as a liquid until it comes out of the, out at this point right here and it continues to the indoor uh, metering device right here. But the, the temperature in which the liquid refrigerant lowers between here and right here, that's called the subcooling. And subcooling is how we uh, check to see if the system's working properly and see if the refrigerant charge is accurate. And so that's really the secret of the refrigerant is the is the refrigerant's ability to basically halt at a specific temperature that's higher than the outdoor air. And it's, it's going to stay at that higher temperature until it comes out of the saturated state. And as it's moving through here, you have the amount of liquid that's within the tube is increasing and the amount of vapor within the tube is decreasing while it's keeping the temperature constant. And so that is what gives the refrigerant the ability to reject and absorb a large amount of heat. Now remember that when we check the pressure of a system, we're not just checking the pressures by itself, we are converting that to temperature because the whole thing is operating on temperature. And so when we check the pressure and convert it to saturated temperature, we're determining what the temperature is on this part of the system right here. And when we check the pressure on the vapor line, we're converting it to saturated temperature and we're really trying to find what the temperature is right here during the phase change of the saturated refrigerant in the coil, even though it's a far distance away from the vapor port. We use that in order to determine total superheat and subcooling. And if you want to learn more, make sure you check out our refrigerant charging and service procedures for air conditioning book. We have a bunch of custom images in our book and we go over not only the system preparation and checking the charge, but also troubleshooting. So you know what's actually happening in the system and you have the indicators there. And so make sure you check this out over on our website at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. We also have our thousand question workbook available and this comes with the answer key. So it's a self-study guide or you can remove the answer key and you can give it to your apprentice. And we also have our quick reference cards. So these can be used in front of the outdoor unit when you're checking the pressures in order to check the charge and to troubleshoot. So we also have our posters, PowerPoints available for teachers. So make sure you check all that out over at acservicetech.com along with our free articles, our quizzes, our quick tips, and calculators. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.